higher intention. Be sure to log on to unitedintentions.org, a virtual community where you learn to create, track, and manifest your passions, one intention at a time. Have a wonderful day, and until next time, live life with intent. The United Intentions Foundation and its associates take no responsibility for the opinions and statements made by the talk show hosts or their guests. Selfless service is the guiding principle that drives Army National Guard soldiers to be always ready whenever disaster strikes. They are your next-door neighbors and your colleagues in schools, offices, and factories. To be a Guard soldier is to stand ready to serve at all times for family, for community, and for country. To learn more, log on to NationalGuard.com or contact an Army National Guard recruiter in your area. Sponsored by the Florida Army National Guard. Aired by the Florida Association of Broadcasters and this station. 1470 AM and 95.3 FM. Download the new WNN app to your phone from your app store and never miss a Talk 1470 AM, 95.3 FM minute. Talk 1470 is WWNN Pompano Beach and 95.3 FM, W237BD Boca Raton. The Health and Wealth Radio Network. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, tune in to the Dr. Bob Martin Show. From erectile dysfunction to eczema, heartburn to headaches, carpal tunnel to how to lower cholesterol drug-free. Sunday mornings at 10 on Talk 1470 WNN. The traditional light bulb, a groundbreaking invention in 1879. Other groundbreaking ideas from that time, the whalebone corset, the pedal-operated submarine, and the two-story outhouse. We've come a long way since then. It's time our light bulbs did the same. Visit energysavers.gov and learn about energy-saving light bulbs. See, these new bulbs are more efficient than the old ones, like a text message is more efficient than a carrier pigeon. They last longer, too, like how we humans last longer now that doctors use antibiotics instead of leeches. And they cut down on our energy costs. Because in our own groundbreaking age of aeroplanes and moving pictures, we deserve a light bulb that saves us some cash. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy and the Ad Council. Now you can get Talk 1470 WNN on 95.3 FM, too. Loud and clear, Health and Wealth Radio, WNN. After the phone interview, I assumed the apartment was mine. But when I got to the place and the manager saw me, he told me it was no longer available. My husband and I wanted to see all the neighborhoods with great schools. But our real estate agent only showed us the communities where she thought we would be more comfortable. I was so excited to move into my new place, but now that I'm here... I found out that the landlord is charging me higher rent than my neighbors. Now that doesn't make me feel very welcome. These individuals may have experienced housing discrimination. The Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination because of race, color, national origin, religion, sex, disability, and familial status. If you've experienced discrimination, call 1-800-669-9777 or visit www.hud.gov slash fairhousing. Live free from housing discrimination. The opinions expressed in the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Welcome to the Golf and Travel Show, the place to fine-tune your swing, dress for the course, club, or cruise, and get tips on the best places to play and stay at the right price. Vacation or staycation, host Dan Shube, along with his expert co-hosts and guests, will tell you where to go. To play golf and vacation, that is. Now, here's Dan. Welcome to the Golf and Travel Show. I'm your host, Dan Shubin. Tonight, like we usually do, we're going to talk a little bit of golf. We're going to talk a little bit of travel. And 
lucky all of you, you got me for an hour. Um, I do have guests lined up for next week and the week after, but this week we've got a bit of a, a lull there. So, uh, but I got plenty of great golf news and travel news and, uh, a little bit of few stories from my, um, trip. I just came back this past week. I spent the week in San Antonio, Texas. So, uh, maybe a couple of restaurant reviews and hotel reviews and, um, a whole bunch of deals for you later on in the show. Uh, happy to say though, next week, we will be uh, uh, joined by Barney Adams, of course, uh, the inventor of the Tight Lies uh, Fairway Woods, um, who has now invented the Stability Shaft, working through a company called Breakthrough Golf Technology. He's going to be on the show next week, and we're going to be giving away two of his incredible putter shafts. Uh, I've got one in my putter. They make a big difference. Uh, retailing for $199 east each, they install it for you, so you don't have to worry about that. And we're going to give away two of them next week, so you're not going to want to mix, miss next week's show. Uh, the following week, we're going to be talking to uh, someone else. Um, Barney's been on the show before, but another return guest who we've had on in the past, a, a friend of mine who's a funny, funny guy by the name of Derek Richards. He tours with the Irish Comedy Tour uh, as well as solo, plays out in Vegas quite a bit. I've seen him out there as well as locally here in Florida. And he has a new book, which is, um, I guess, uh, I guess an autobiography, you would call it, um, dealing with some issues that he's had to deal with and overcome in his life. One is his love of whiskey, um, and the other is cancer. So uh, he had a rough bout of that, and he's managed to beat both of those issues and wrote a book about it, which might make for a great holiday gift for Anybody like myself, perhaps, who's also um, had a battle, not with the whiskey, but with the cancer. And um, he's just a funny guy. He has a different way of uh, talking about these serious issues, So, but a funny guy. So in two weeks, we're going to be talking to Derek Richards live on the show. Um, but like we typically do, we like to talk a little bit of golf to lead off. And for better or for worse, this past week, at least on this side of the ocean, if you are interested in golf, it's pretty much Tiger, Tiger, and more Tiger, which is something that we we like to give him his props when he deserves it. Of course, being a Palm Beach County resident here, um, he's our local guy, but sometimes it gets a little out of hand, and um, unfortunately this week, that's just what it's all about. Uh, last week, while we were on the air, of course, there was the match, and... Um, a bit of a fiasco, I suppose. Uh, we, we were talking a little bit about it last week. They had a bunch of side bets going on that they, you know, Tiger, I think, won the first one, and Phil may have won a couple of subsequent ones, but several of the side bets didn't really materialize into anything. All of the trash talk that they were hoping to get, you know, kind of like a boxing match or a wrestling match, these are guys that they're if they want to win at golf, they focus on playing the game not trash talking. So there wasn't much of that going on. Um, another part of or question about the whole event was the fact that it was on pay-per-view. I had mentioned previously that, that I was not going to pony up the $20. I, I feel like I pay my cable company enough money for all the programming that I hardly watch to begin with. And I can watch competitive golf for free on a channel or two or three typically. So uh, I, I chose not to, to do that. But what happened, and, and well, and the other thing was I, I thought a lot of other people would do the same. I really wasn't expecting there to be a huge demand for this product, even at $20. They had lowered the price from 25 was the original thought, I think. Um, but the weird thing that happened was is it was streaming on satellite TV. It was streaming on cable TV. It was streaming on the Internet. But one of the feeds on the Internet, somehow they messed it up. And instead of people who were paying getting to see it, everybody got to see it. Uh, needless to say, the folks that paid their $20 were none too pleased to find out that people who paid nothing were getting to see it as well. And all of the companies, the cable companies and satellite companies and streaming companies that were providing this to their customers, they were pretty much forced to refund the money to everybody who paid. Now, I almost thought that maybe the whole thing was kind of made up that, you know, Maybe because nobody tuned in, they decided to give it away so that somebody would be watching it. Uh, and I don't know how truthful the information is that's being released, but it seems that the executives that put this thing together were expecting perhaps 100,000 subscribers. And they claim that they got closer to a million dollars 
in subscribers. So now they're going to have to refund twenty dollars to each of these million subscribers. It seems if if that's true. Um, of course, they also uh, Phil Mickelson won it in overtime. Several uh, extra holes they had to go to, which uh, that too I don't know if that was real or, or fake. I mean. So much of this was like a, a professional wrestling match that um, I, I don't know how much of it may have been scripted or maybe none of it. I, I, I don't have any inside information on that, but um, it was a little suspicious. So Phil took home the nine million dollar prize and the bragging rights. And I guess they had a bunch of sponsors that um, paid in some money, too. So maybe they didn't lose you know, their shirts, but they obviously didn't make much either. They were trying to claim victory by the fact that they seem to have managed to get so many people to tune in um, and, and volunteer to pay, even though they had to return, you know, the, the fees to all those folks. Um, I, I don't know. It, it, it's just, you know, I mean, Tiger, after the fact, admitted that he was kind of tired and burnt out and um, Phil, perhaps the same. Um you know, I think these are two guys that on any given day, they still can shoot a great round. Unfortunately, it's not every given day, and it, it wasn't last Friday night. So um, we'll have to see what happens. I, I still kind of wish that they would bring back the Skins game that was so successful for so long. I, I know the ratings started to dip, and, um, you know, they, ha they had to stop it. But um, it's been a long time, and there's a whole bunch of different golfers, and there are so many good golfers. If they could put together a foursome, of competitive golfers, the guys that are at the top of their game, I, I think that there might be some interest in that. So I'd like to see that. Um, as far as this week's tournament, of course, it's Tiger Woods' tournament this week, which, um, you know, is kind of, I guess, what we used to call a silly season or made-for-TV event, whereby it's, it's an invitational and 17 players and Tiger get to play uh, over in the Bahamas. And obviously, Tiger still is tired, um, cause he's certainly not playing his best golf. I, I was watching it, uh, the replay last night from Thursday's round and he, he had a ball that was, uh, just over the red, um, uh, line. So, um, he was in a hazard, uh, in the rough, um, there was a bunch of sand and then a lake behind him and he had a, a wedged, uh, ball up, up against, um, kind of like the lip. Uh, or was a little bit buried in the sand perhaps too. And it was a very difficult shot. He tried to hit it out. He got it out, went up the hill heading towards the green, didn't make it, rolled back past him and into the water. And then he had to take an unplayable lie. Uh, so he, he didn't do too well on Thursday. His Friday does not seem to be all that much better. Uh, on the 18th hole, there was uh, an event whereby it seems that the – uh, replay in very slow motion showed that he hit the ball twice and didn't call a penalty on himself. Um, they decided that there was no way for him to know without the super slow motion. So therefore, um, there was no penalty after the fact assessed or disqualification or anything like that for putting in a wrong score or, or whatever. Um, I, I've hit the ball on many occasions more than once. And I, I always know it when it happens, but it, it's a weird thing. I don't even know how it's possible that it happens, but, but it does. And um, Tiger just, he, he's just not looking that good. I, I think he was tied for 14th in an 18 man field, uh, eight strokes back behind the leaders. Uh, the leaders um, uh, currently are uh, John Rahm and Henrik Stenson at minus 10. And uh, I don't think that Tiger's going to have a chance this weekend to, to get back in it. So we'll have to see how that all works out. Um, also, uh, <laughs> a little bit of local news in the golf world, just something that's not Tiger. Um, I did see that uh, Golf Digest, they named their best new courses for the year 2018. And um, one of the top courses, uh, let's see, one of the winners um, was the brand new black horse at Streamsong. Uh, that's the third course that they have up there. And um, I haven't had a chance to play it. I've played at Streamsong. Uh, it's just a, a beautiful place, a little bit out of the way, um, a little bit expensive in season. But if you live here in Florida, you should go check out Streamsong and maybe check out the black, which uh, 
uh, seems to have uh, gotten some accolades. I uh, also wanted to mention that this past week I saw a real funny picture. It seems that Jordan Spieth had a quasi-bachelor party with some of his friends. Of course, folks like Ricky Fowler or Justin Thomas are his friends. And the picture showed all of them learning um, uh well, they, they, it was a funny picture. Let's just leave it at that. Um, they, 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 they were curling. That's what they were doing. They, they were learning how to curl. I didn't know how to quite say that, but um, they, they had a great time, and uh, those guys are a blast. So uh, more power to them. They know how to relax when the pressure is off. All right, I think what we are going to do is take our first break, get a message from our sponsor, and then we'll be back, and I'm going to talk a little bit about my trip to San Antonio. You're not going to want to miss it, so stay tuned, and we'll be back with more of the Golf and Travel Show. I'm not smart enough. My resume is not up to date. They'll never pick someone like me. No one's hiring right now. Sound familiar? Don't let you get in the way of lending your next job opportunity. Sometimes it's best to leave it up to the experts. Did you know that the last reported job openings in the U.S. as of this recording was a serious high of 6.7 million jobs and that 1.1 million of those jobs were left unfilled? This means that there's a potential opportunity that's just right for you. And at Labor Finders, we're committed to helping you find it. Whether you're entering the workforce or looking for supplemental income in a job that starts right away, we got you covered. With over 300,000 clients across the U.S. and 20,000 active daily workers, we have the network and the experience to get you your next job. Contact one of our nearly 200 offices today to see how we can help in your job search. Simply visit us online at www.laborfinders.com or connect with us on social media by searching the username LaborFinders. And we are back. And uh, as promised, um, give you a little recap of my travels. I do get on the road quite a bit, and this past week was no exception. Had an opportunity to visit San Antonio, Texas. Uh, hadn't been there for a couple of years. Didn't do all of the usual stuff um, like the river walk. I mean, I, I was there for a minute or two. The Alamo, I did that a few years ago. It's it's great stuff. Um, the Spurs were not in town. They were out of town, so... They were not around to go see, uh, but it's a great town to visit nonetheless. Uh, I flew both ways on my favorite airline, Southwest, and they did a heck of a job in both directions, actually landing, uh, taking off and landing out of Fort Lauderdale. Um, when we came back, we were about 15 minutes early, which is unusual. Uh, one criticism, though, is I did have some checked luggage, and I have to say that the getting your luggage in Fort Lauderdale whatever airline I use, Southwest or otherwise, is always significantly slower than um, other uh, airports, especially PBI, Palm Beach. Um, last time I came into PBI, I got off the plane, I walked to the baggage carousel, and every single suitcase was there already. This time, it took 35 minutes before the first one appeared in Fort Lauderdale. I, I just don't understand what the problem is, but... Uh, you know, their renovations that they did, they, they did a halfway decent job. The other half, not so decent. So um, it's better than it was, but Fort Lauderdale is still not a world-class airport. It, it just isn't. Um, they have the flights. They, they, they got sometimes more direct flights or better prices on occasion. But when it comes to service, when it comes to uh, the options to get a bite to eat, when it comes to the parking garages, it's it's half good. 
but uh, it's also half bad. So that's just my opinion. I'm sorry. Um, stayed at the Marriott River Center out in San Antonio. A great uh, rest, uh, a great hotel to stay at. Uh, reasonably priced at least this time of year. The weather out there was similar to here, actually. Um, the, this cooler weather that we've lately been experiencing, uh, except very dry, no humidity at all. So. Uh, a nice um, change of pace, of course, uh, to get out there and get some cool, dry weather. I was out there working a trade show on behalf of our sponsor, Labor Finders. It's a show called the IAFE, which is for state fairs and county fairs. And I got to tell you, some of the other exhibitors, these are people who exhibit to um, you know, get gigs at these fairs. And, uh, I mean, some of the stuff was really, really cool. Um, like soccer playing dogs, for instance, and, and a lot of dog acts, um, music acts, country music, and um, uh, the Muppets were there. Uh, you see all sorts of crazy things there. It was it was quite interesting. Uh, for entertainment, being that I was kind of working most of the day, um, really all I did was go out with my buddy uh, who I was working with um, to two different restaurants uh, of note. Uh, the first night we just went to an IHOP, which was good at like, 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night, they were open 24-7, so it's 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 good at that hour. But uh, the other two nights, the first night, what we wanted that, you know, we truly had to, to pick a place, we obviously wanted to find some good Tex-Mex uh, food. And, you know, I mean, why not? Uh, we're in Texas. Uh, that's what you want to do, right? So not knowing where to go, uh, one good piece of advice might be, this worked out really well for us, is, is we, we grabbed a bite for lunch at the hotel, and our waiter um, was obviously Hispanic, and we figured we would ask him. He looked like he'd been working in the food business for a long time. And he said that his family for like the last 30 or 40 years has been going to these three different places. And he explained each one to us and why he recommends them. They were all slightly different styles of Tex-Mex. So we ended up settling on uh, one that sounded like what we were looking for, a place called La Margarita. And La Margarita is in a complex where there are several restaurants all owned by the Cortez family, which was pretty cool. I mean, here you have, you know, literally cornered the market on on restaurants, you know, with all these um, Mexican restaurants, all slightly different, but um, all in the same area. Uh, So La Margarita actually is called a Mexican restaurant and oyster bar, which sounds weird, too, to me, Um, an oyster bar with a Tex-Mex restaurant in a in texas but um obviously they in texas they get a lot of the gulf oysters just like we here in florida get too and this was a your traditional tex-mex kind of place it was large of course they had the (coughs) the strolling mariachi uh band uh walking around and um they had this was monday night so they had the football game on until the spurs game came on and of course they changed the channel to the spurs game but we actually listened to the recommendation from our waiter he not only recommended the restaurant he told us what to order and he was spot on this guy so um always good to get inside information he said that they've got a platter um for either two or for four that features all sorts of stuff that's grilled and um he was right on with this it came with chicken sausage um steak uh, a, a stuffed pepper um uh, uh, some vegetables, and of course, uh, it came with soft tortillas and rice and uh, salsa and guacamole. And I got to tell you, this this was a feast. Um, you know, they say it's for two. It probably could have fed three. Um, just tons of food, excellently grilled, tender, well-seasoned. The service was excellent. Our waiter probably has worked there for 20 or 30 years, it seemed. He, he really knew his stuff, very, very friendly. And um, just a great place. So when you're in San Antonio, check out the Cortez um, Family Restaurants and La Margarita. And um, you, they do have a website. You can go to lamargarita.com, and uh, that's how you can track it down. They actually have some I, – I couldn't – they didn't have a menu on there. Uh, of course, you can, you know, go to Yelp or a place like that and get more information on the menu. But um, – they do have some family recipes on there, so you can actually get their recipes and, and, and check them out. So that's pretty pretty cool. Now, the next night, we took a totally different approach. And um, I, I do this often, and, you know, not everybody has the same degree of success, but I, I typically am pretty successful with this, maybe because I'm a marketer myself and I 
have a bit of a sense as to what I can trust and not trust. But I actually just went to Yelp and started searching for um, some cool restaurants in the area. And I, I found one that, that caught my eye. It was a place called La Frite, and it's a Belgian bistro. And a Belgian bistro, the last place on earth I would expect to find that would be in San Antonio, Texas. They are the only Belgian bistro in San Antonio, Texas, of course, and they feature Belgian and French dishes. Well, I visited Belgium. I visited France. I happen to love the food in both locations. I have to say that the service, especially if you don't speak uh, French too well, um, in Belgium was not very good. Um, and in France, it's just slightly better. Um, here at La Frite, it, it's a family restaurant. It's um, run by the Donnelly family. And uh, one of the Donnellys was there. Um, I think his name was Rink Donnelly, perhaps one of the sons. I, I think his parents started the um, operation. But, the, you know, he came over and introduced himself. I mean, he had no idea that I have a radio show and that I might review his restaurant. But um, very friendly, as well as the wait staff, extremely friendly, great service. But what a treat the food was. First of all, uh, we, we shared uh, some uh, moul, um, which, you know, mussels, which is a traditional Belgium dish, of course. Cooked six different ways you can get it, six different uh, varieties of flavors and um you know, from the more traditional, uh, uh, like a miniere kind of a thing with with a garlic and and uh, a butter and cream and shallots. Um, we had a Provencal, so uh, it didn't have the cream. Instead, it had some tomatoes in it. But um, there were four other flavors as well and cooked perfectly. Just so delectable. It, it was excellent. I, I just I had a craving for that. And I, I was, my expectation level was high and they did not disappoint. And we continued down that same road of doing pretty traditional French or Belgian French type dishes. Uh, myself and my buddy, we both um, went for the uh, steak frite, which of course is is very traditional in, in either country. Uh, they had three different types of steak you could choose from, I believe. They had a hanger steak, um, maybe a strip steak, and we opted for the filet mignon, which was cooked um, au pavre, which of course is you know, very traditional French with a with a pepper sauce on top of it. And, of course, with the fries in the cup sticking out from, from the cup, um, both just cooked perfectly. And, you know, steak, of course, I mean, we're in Texas, so I figured beef, you know, is, is a good option. This was one of the more expensive items on the menu at $29. For an excellent filet mignon with fries, $29, not bad at all. Um, and things continued uh, to, to just work out wonderfully for us because we had to get the dessert as well. I opted for uh, a Belgian choice, which was a Belgian waffle, which was dressed with all sorts of toppings and fruit. Uh, just, just wonderful. Um, and my buddy, he went with the uh, the French option, the, the mousse au chocolat, uh, the chocolate mousse, uh, which was excellent as well. I, I tasted it too. So all in all, it was just a wonderful meal. Um, they also have a happy hour weekdays from 5 to 7. We got there after that, so I'm not quite sure what that is, but a happy hour is always a good thing. They also had a price-fixed uh, three-course meal uh, that you could opt for as well. We chose not to do it only because the choices were not exactly what we were looking for on this particular night. But um, all in all, uh, the value, uh, reasonably priced, I'd say moderately priced, and um, just excellent food, excellent service, La Frite. So you can find their website at Lafrite, L-A-F-R-I-T-E-S-A, as in San Antonio, dot com, Lafrite, S-A, dot com. And um, just uh, it's, it's just it's it is a foodie town. It's 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 a great place. Um, and I got to tell you that when you're on the river walk, it's a lot of fun. There's some wonderful restaurants and but, it, you know, it's it's a touristy area over there. So sometimes going a little bit away from where all the tourists go um you may find yourself uh, getting a better deal, a better price, and, and maybe even better quality. Not to say that the places on the Riverwalk aren't wonderful, but there were many chains that were there. And other than our uh, stop at the IHOP, which was out of necessity because it was so late at night, uh, I, I'd much rather go to a, a one, you know, or a family kind of a place than, than a, a national chain kind of a place. So um, highly recommended La Frite and La Margarita. 
I don't know why both restaurants were la. It just um, just worked out that way. But um, San Antonio is definitely a cool town. We spent some time talking to a family of illusionists that were uh, exhibiting across from us, and their their youngest was maybe ten years old. Their eldest, uh, four daughters, was seventeen. And my buddy, uh, who I was working the show with, I, I, you know, he says, who who takes those boat rides down the river walk? I said, well, it's really cool for young families. And sure enough, these kids were so excited to have had an opportunity to take the boat ride down the river. Um, there's something for everybody in San Antonio.